Hey guys, and how you doing again? And I just want to go into image enhancements. So after you've done your corrections, which includes your geometric, radiometric, and atmospheric corrections, then you can go into image enhancements before your classification, error assessment, and change detection. So I'm bringing this information down from the GSP website. It has something on the spatial enhancements, and also has a similar page on the spectral enhancements. So go ahead and find that. And I'll have this page in the description below. So uh, spatial enhancements uh, comes in a few different models, and essentially, Enhancements, uh, spatial enhance enhancements, are about highlighting or suppressing detail based on high spatial frequency. Uh, so there are two forms of sp spatial frequency. There are low and high. In a low spatial frequency, um, you will have a, let's say like a color, say let's just say blue for a second. Um, blue can slowly, bl um, uh, can slowly move into more or less of its value. So uh, white is more of a value, so like one, and black is a low value of blue, so zero. Uh, and so when you're doing uh, these spectral enhancements, uh, things will come up as either black or white, depending on the spectral version which you'll use, which I'll go over in a second. And then you have the high spatial frequency, which is where a color has a very short um, distinction between what is high and low. So in low spatial frequency, uh, one starts at white and then it slowly goes into zero. So one becomes 0 0.9 and 0 0.8 and 0 0.7 until it gets to black, which is zero. In high spatial frequency, you pretty much go from 0, 1, 0, 1, 0, 1. Uh, so in high spatial frequency, there's very, there's very um, quick movement Whereas in low spatial frequency, it's a gradual movement between high and low of some wavelength or band or color, whatever you want to call it, it's got three names. Um, and so what you do in spatial enhancements is you have a window which scans across an entire map, giving cells new values. So it looks a little something like this. Um, it's, it's a window that scans across the entire image. And you can have low pass filters, which will um, essentially blur the image so that all the features in an area or within an entire map, if you're doing an entire map, um, will all be like brought together in value. And then you have a high pass filter, which is essentially to sharpen image uh, by um, reducing heavily or heavily increasing the values of the neighborhood of a cell. Uh, so that's what you're doing in high pass and low pass. And why would you do these? So in high pass filters, in uh, spatial enhancements, you are intending to break up features. So for example, you can break up the river from the forest. Whereas in a low pass filter, you want to blend it all together. So you might have, say, like an urban area. Um, you, you may want that entire urban area to be one value. And if you ever looked at an urban area from a map, you know that that urban area has a bunch of buildings but it may also have a bunch of trees within it too. So if you've ever been to the uh, suburbs, um, you know that there are lots of trees and buildings in the suburbs in the same area, but you may classify that entire area as urban, as one class called urban. Uh, so you won't have, you won't, you know, uh, call that urban area um, two groups, so trees and buildings. You would just have it as just urban, which includes trees and buildings. So that's why, you would, that's why you would do low pass and high pass is if you want to break up the groups. And then you also have spectral enhancements. So remember, uh, go back to this website again, just uh, find the spectral enhancements version of the same website page. And what spectral enhancements are, uh, these are essentially, they're called indices, which are models or equations that are used to emphasize certain feature types. So what do I mean by that? Um, so if you remember when I brought up this a second ago, uh, I was talking about low spatial frequency. So um, vegetation, for example, has a uh, an indice called NDVI. It also has two other and uh, indices called the EVI, and I think there's also the DVI. Uh, so what these do is they highlight vegetation, with white being a high value one and black being a low value zero. Um, and then you also have other indices, like mineral indices, which, as the name suggests, they identify minerals on the Earth. Um, so, for example, let's say, um, let's just use the vegetation again for a second. So the NDVI uses, like, uh, near-infrared and red. It's an equation. It does near-infrared minus red over near-infrared plus red or something. 
Um, you have to Google the NDVIs exactly, but uh, that is a indice, which is a spectral enhancement. And once you have this spatial and spectral enhancement, once you've done these two things, uh, then you should have, for example, like an urban area, which is distinct from every other area. And uh, that's what you want to have ready for when you do the classification, which is the next step. Um, after you've done the corrections, you want to, so the corrections are just to make sure that the image is like correct, right? Then you have image enhancements, whereas you're trying to break up and separate the groups as much as possible. And then you have classification where you'll classify the groups, and that's the easiest step. And then once you perform that, then you can do error assessment. You're using a error matrix um, where essentially you can do uh, a few things. Uh, essentially what you're trying to do is you're trying to put a bunch of points onto a map, and then you want to um, use a reference map and the map that you're working on, and you want to have points on both of those maps in the exact same places, and you want to find out if those points are correct from the base map to, uh, oh, not the base map, I would call it the, um, the reference map to your map. And uh, you can use either random points on the two maps, random points that are in the same positions, or you can use like stratified points, uh, or you can use systematic points, which are essentially just a grid of evenly spaced points across both those maps to see uh, if it's correct. And that'll give you your producer and user accuracies. And the inverse of these are the emission and commissions, which I'll go into later. But anyway, um, also, if you want to do object-based image analysis, um, you can do you can use these other programs called ERDAS and eCognition. Uh, and so remember, object-based image analysis is if you intend to look at groups. So the alternatives to object-based image analysis is supervised and unsupervised classification. Um, in object-based image analysis is where uh, I've gone into this somewhere before, but basically you create a hierarchy of uh, features. Uh, and then they have, then they are broken down into smaller features. Oh, well, sorry, uh, wrong way. They amalgamated up into bigger features, uh, and um, each one of those features are defined based on a spatial awareness. So, unlike in uh, supervised or unsupervised classification, in object-based image analysis, um, the features uh, look at the the programs look at the shapes of features that you define if you're using uh, regions of interest, it'll look at those shapes and then it'll compare those shapes to all other shapes. So for example, if I um, put a region of interest on a house, in object-based image analysis, it'll look at, um, oh, how bad. Uh, it'll look at um, a house and then it'll look at the surroundings of a house. Houses typically are surrounded by trees and therefore it will define all the other houses in the same group called house, let's just call it. So that's what object-based image analysis is good for. Anyway, I hope you guys have learned something and stay tuned for the following video.